Mr. Chairman, this is the amendment we've been talking about already tonight, uh, which is simply to add currency manipulation within Trade Promotion Authority. It's very targeted. It's an amendment that's supported on a bipartisan basis. Senator Stabenow uh, is going to speak on it in just a second, but also Senator Burr, uh, Senator Brown, Senator Casey. Before we start, I'd ask to, uh, unanimous consent that Senator Schumer also be added as a co-sponsor to this uh, amendment. We have talked about the importance of TPA, and I agree with what Senator Wyden said. This underlying bill is extremely important for us to pass because it will expand opportunities for workers in my state and around the country. It's been seven years since we've had a trade promotion authority. In the meantime, there have been hundreds of trade agreements negotiated by other countries. We've been left out. This means we've lost market share. But as we do this, let's be sure that it's fair to American workers. And right now, the playing field is tilted against us. We just had a discussion about this in the context of Senator Schumer's legislation that he offered as an amendment. And everybody around the room, I think, agrees that currency manipulation is something that we ought to be prohibiting. Now, Senator Schumer talked about doing it through a specific mechanism of countervailing duties. Uh, I support that. I'm, I'm a member, I'm a, a co-sponsor of that legislation. But this is about within trade promotion authorities, simply including as one of the negotiating objectives that we look at currency. I, I would find it very hard to believe that someone could have voted for the specific measure that Senator Schumer talked about and vote against this amendment because it is targeted. It has to do just with those partners who we negotiate a free trade agreement with, uh, and we're very careful in terms of how we do it. I heard earlier from the Treasury Department that there is no universal standard on what constitutes currency manipulation. With all due respect, I would disagree. Uh, the IMF has standards. All of these countries we're talking about, including all the countries in TPP, are members of the IMF. They've already undertaken not to manipulate their currency to live by these principles. The WTO has even established that this is a practice that is prohibited. They have deferred, it's true, to the IMF, but they have said currency manipulation should be prohibited. So there are standards here, and our legislation follows those standards. Specifically, it says, with regard to unfair exchange practices that target, the ones we want to target here are protracted large-scale interventions in one direction in the exchange markets to gain an unfair competitive advantage in trade over other parties to a trade agreement. So this is not monetary policy. This is not macroeconomic policy that countries engage in, uh, including the United States with QE1, 2, 3. This is intervening deliberately because you want to expand your exports, and it has to be, again, I repeat, protracted large-scale intervention in one direction clearly consistent with the IMF standards, clearly consistent with the WTO. In fact, our amendment says that it has to be consistent, whatever the trade negotiators decide on, consistent with existing IMF and WTO principles and agreements. So do we leave some discretion to the negotiators? Yes, we do. We think that's appropriate. I know some think we should go further than this. And maybe Senator Stabenow will, will talk about that. But what we say is the best way to do this is to have an enforceable currency outcome based on IMF principles, but give the negotiators flexibility. Flexibility as to what the remedy is, as to how you go about it. Uh, it does not lock the administration into a specific remedy. It's not intended to derail TPP or any future trade agreements. It's meant to improve those trade agreements. It's meant to improve, most importantly, the competitive position of American workers. Uh, I first got involved in this issue, as, we, as noted, when I was U.S. Trade Rep. But I've become more and more convinced over time, including talking to Ohio workers in the steel business, and the steel industry, by the way, is strongly behind this, and the auto business, they're strongly behind this, that they're not getting a fair shake unless we can deal with this issue. Volcker, former Secretary of Treasury Volcker, has said it uh, very well, which is that in one week, in one week, through currency exchanges, you can undo years of benefits in terms of reducing tariffs and non-tariff barriers in a trade agreement. That's just a reality. So I would urge my colleagues to support it today. Certainly, if you support it, the, uh, the amendment that Senator Schumer offered, you should support this. This is very targeted. It's focused. It's consistent with WTO. In fact, it says it has to be consistent with the IMF and WTO principles and agreements. I would urge my colleagues to support TPA, yes, because it's the right thing to do to open up these markets, but to do it in a way that enables our workers to compete. If they are given this level playing field, they can compete and they can win in the global trade war, but we have to be sure we give them the tools to be able to succeed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, I, would, I would love to have the administration's viewpoint on this. Uh,
Is he, uh, do we have somebody from the administration here? Is Mr. Doss here? Did he just step up for a few minutes? He's there. He moved to the middle. Oh, Mr. Doss, you're in charge, so we'd like to like to hear the administration's position on this. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Hatch. And please turn your mic on. That's good. There we go. Um, thank you again, uh, Chairman Hatch. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, the Sec Secretary Liu and the administration have worked intensively to address currency practices through a number of bilateral and multilateral fora. Um, the concern for us in the amendment offered by Senator Portman, however, would in fact have a significant implication in derail TPP negotiations, as well as hobble legitimate monetary policy objectives. Um, as Secretary Liu has noted, uh, we have formally consulted with TPP countries uh, last week. Uh, our TPP partners have indicated uh, a shared understanding of the concerns raised by Congress, and they have indicated that they're willing to work constructively with us as well. However, uh, they uh, uniformly are raised significant concerns about enforceable currency disciplines and rejected the notion of subscribing to uh, uniform uh, enforceable currency disciplines for a range of reasons, including the potential impacts on their ability to uh, effectively use and deploy their monetary policies as well. Um, based on these discussions, uh, we would expect that countries, uh, RTP partners, TPP partners in the context of the negotiations would seek to uh, identify uh, uh, measures, standards that would seek to target our uh, monetary policies as well and to seek to subject those to binding dispute settlement. Um, and so this presents a significant amount of concern for us. Um, in fact, uh, Federal Reserve Chairwoman uh, Yellen has stated serious concerns about an enforceable discipline in trade agreements precisely because it could potentially hobble uh, U.S. monetary policy objectives. Thank you. Hey, Senator Wyden. Th th thank you, Mr. Chairman. That last point with respect to monetary policy, I think, is really the flaw in this particular amendment. This amendment runs the risk of getting us into the business of establishing rules for monetary policy and, in effect, constraining our monetary policy. And, Mr. Chairman, I would ask unanimous consent to uh, put into the record an excerpt of testimony from Federal Reserve Chair Yellen to the Senate Banking uh, Committee, and then I'm just going to briefly touch on her major observance. That Without objection, we'll right. put it in the record. Okay. Colleagues, Janet Yellen observed, and this is what I put in uh, to the record, that she is very concerned about commitments in our trade agreements that in any way would <clears throat> hamper our ability to have monetary policy that was designed to address the major domestic objectives of the Fed. We all understand that what the Fed is really all about is trying to find price stability and maximum uh, employment, but trying to get this right, to calibrate that um, challenging uh, balance, you've got to make, make sure that you are not restraining monetary policy. So with reluctance, I have to oppose the Portman, Portman Amendment, and I would really urge colleagues to think through the ramifications of this amendment for American monetary policy at a time when clearly we want to grow more family wage jobs in our, our country. And we don't want to keep uh, uh, the Federal Reserve from having as much flexibility as possible with respect to the monetary tools they're going to need to uh, bring that about. Thank you, Thank Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Wyden. Senator Mr. Cornyn is next, and then Mr. I'll Chairman, I, as a co-sponsor of the amendment. Mr. Das, the um, no, well, let me just say that Senator Cornyn and I will be listed as a co-sponsor of the amendment. Okay. Senator Cornyn. It's, her, it's hers. It's hers. You what? Would you mind if I recognize her? No, go ahead. Thanks. 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 Senator Stabenow. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, I thought as the co-sponsor of the amendment, I was going to have, sure. have a chance to that's, that's thank, 
Thank you very much. I, I did want to respond, first of all, um, to, to say um, it's a pleasure working with uh, Senator Portman on this and all of my colleagues. And in fact, there are rules on monetary policy through the IMF. All the countries involved have signed up. They won't uh, manipulate their currency, but there's no enforcement of it. So we already have the monetary policies. We're not interfering with that. We're just deciding that maybe it ought to be real this time because of what's happening in terms of job loss. And so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate uh, the fact that there is language for the first time and negotiating uh, principle and objective that is uh, put into TPA. I do appreciate that on currency practices. But without language that says that there, it needs to be enforceable, which is what this amendment does, it just doesn't do what needs to be done. And I've said so many times, but I, I feel compelled to say again, last year, or maybe it was two years ago now, Senator Graham and I authored a, a letter signed by 60 members of the Senate indicating that we all wanted to have enforceable currency language in any bill that passed. And so that's what this does. I mean, it could go farther and say you can't get fast track authority unless you have uh, uh, currency, enforceable currency language in a trade agreement. I, I would be happy to do that. Uh, that's not what this says. This says that as a principle, as a, a negotiating objective, that whatever we do, we just to have, have to have in forcible provisions. And I would finally, Mr. Chairman, just want to note, I know this is because of the strong feelings of the automobile industry and uh, Japan. I know this is often referred to as the uh, auto amendment, which I'm proud to, to certainly say that they are, are deeply concerned and supportive of this. But I also want to indicate for the record it's much broader than that. The U.S. Business and Industry Council is endorsing this. The American Iron and Steel Institute, uh, the Alliance for American Manufacturing, a whole host uh, of auto suppliers that represent many, many of our states um, are also on board with this because this is very serious and if we're giving fast track authority to negotiate trade agreements, then making sure this provision uh, is strong and enforceable is absolutely critical. And so I join with my colleague in urging a yes vote. All right, Senator Cornyn. Mr. Chairman, if I can ask, Mr. is it Mr. Doss? Um, you are speaking for the administration on this panel? Treasury. Yes, sir, I am. I'm speaking for the Treasury Department. Would you, uh, would you turn your microphone on? Yes, sir. On and I am speaking speak for uh, the Treasury Department, yes. And um, does the Obama administration regard this amendment as a poison pill? Uh, we are concerned about this uh, uh, provision as in, in, with respect to the potential for derailing the TPP negotiations, yes, sir. And so, yes, you regard this as a poison pill? Um, we are very concerned about this provision and its impact. We would consider it to be a poison pill, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, um, I want to see this legislation pass, uh, TPA, and I believe strongly in trade, and I think it's good for the country, good for wages, good for the economy, good for jobs. As much as I respect the uh, distinguished, my distinguished friend from Ohio, uh, and I regard him as an expert in this area, and I frankly am not. I do worry that given the fragile compromise that the chairman and the ranking member have uh, undertaken here and on this negotiation, if something is added to this legislation which jeopardizes its passage, and ultimately um, that to me is something as a path we should not go down. So uh, if the administration, President Obama and his administration regard this as a poison pill, I don't know what the vote count is on the Democratic side. I know this is a difficult issue for our Democratic friends, and the, frankly, the currency manip manipulation issue is a difficult issue on our side as well. Um, but I'm, I'm very concerned that uh, if it is adopted that uh, we won't be able to achieve our objective, and that concerns me greatly. Well, the Senator has spoken well. I, I have to say that if, if, if this amendment passes, you can kiss TPP goodbye. 
Would you disagree with that, Mr. Doss? I would say it would make the TPP negotiations. I can't hear you. You're going to have to speak I up. apologize. Um, I agree. It would derail the TPP negotiations. Yeah, uh, yeah. and we're trying. This is, this is one of the few times we can really get a good agreement with Japan. We've come a long way. And if we, uh, and it's not just uh, Japan, there are 11 nations here in the TPP, plus ours. I agree with you. So I'm very concerned about this amendment. I know the sincerity behind it. I have great feelings about it myself, but I don't want to this <coughs> bill, and I think it makes it very difficult for us to carry this bill through. And I think all of us are concerned about these issues, but we also have to deal with practicalities as well. So I'm very concerned about it. Senator Schumer. Thank you. I support the amendment and want to salute both Senators Portman and Stabenow for the good, long work they've done on this. Well, on the substance, we have agreement. Not agreement, but the committee seems to overwhelmingly feel currency manipulation is a bad thing. So it's not the substance of it. And then there's the question, well, should we add it into TPA? And here I would just argue to my colleagues that we have to change the way we do trade agreements. I believe that we should do trade agreements. And I certainly believe in the administration's goal of weaning these nations away from China and putting them more in our, with our economic, uh, uh, in our economic world. That's a great, that's a very appealing rationale. But it can't come at the expense of doing things that are so untoward and so harmful to American workers. As I mentioned before, this hurts us both ways. It hurts our ability to export. This bill is, is heralded by the administration and others as a way to increase exports, jobs. I heard uh, uh, Ways and Means Chair Ryan on the TV tonight or today. And he was saying, this is the best way to increase jobs. Well, we're putting our exporters at a significant disadvantage if our countries we trade with can manipulate currency. At the same time, it hurts production here because it means they're our imports are unduly and unfairly cheaper. So yes, let's have trade agreements. That's OK with me. I lost the AFL-CIO endorsement when I was in the House supporting these trade agreements. But I've come to the conclusion that with middle class incomes declining and with a need to rebuild the middle class in America, that we have to rethink the way we do trade. Now, you know, our amendment, the amendment Senator Portman and Burr and Brown and Stabenow and all of us did, we didn't put it into TPA. We hope to get it done alongside TPA. That was always our hope. But I don't think there's anything intrinsically wrong. In fact, I think there's a lot intrinsically right with putting this inside TPA because we have to change the way we do trade agreements, and we have to prevent our, co our, our fellow nations from treating us unfairly, which I think has happened for a long period of time. So I hope we can get some support for this amendment. Well, I'm prepared to. Uh... Mr. Chairman, if I might have just one more minute, and just to make two quick points. If, in fact, requiring Japan and the other uh, the other countries that are going to be a part of TPP to actually live up to the IMF rules and the requirements that they not manipulate their currency is in fact a poison pill and will cause the agreement not to go through, then it shouldn't go through, in my opinion, if that's what it takes. But secondly, I would argue that that is in fact uh, not A, not what will happen, and in fact adding currency language that is enforceable will actually pick up votes as this process goes through. I think it's going to have a hard time, this whole process, getting done in the House. And whenever you add currency enforcement, you actually, I believe, pick up support because there is bipartisan support to actually do this in a reasonable, thoughtful way. This amendment is a, a reasonable, thoughtful approach, and I would hope we could support Mr. it. Thank Mr. Chairman, you. may I ask, just, Mr. Chairman, who may I just have? Who? Mr. Chairman. Senator, Senator Cornyn. Mr. Chairman, I, I beg your pardon. May I, may I ask our, our friend, uh, 
from Michigan. Are you prepared, if this amendment is adopted, are you prepared to vote for the TPA? I'm prepared to, uh, to think a little better of this process going through. <laughs> uh, I have to say, as a compromise, to my friend from Texas, uh, th this, in my judgment, is a compromise in terms of the language. Um, and you know, if I had my way, could wave a magic wand, I would say you don't get fast track authority unless you have, in fact, a strong currency enforcement provision. That's not, that's not what this is. This is strong. This is good. But it is, in fact, I believe, a reasonable middle ground. And Mr. so, Mr. Chairman, so I it is not enough for me. But if I can it just is, say briefly, Chairman. I appreciate the candor of our of our friend from Michigan. But this is going to be a matter at some point of counting the votes to right. pass the TPA. And so, if adopting this amendment doesn't gain us votes, but rather loses votes in the final passage, then it strikes me as the poison pill that the administration Sorry argues it is. Well, Senator, uh, uh, Senator Mr. Burr, Chairman. then we'll have Senator Portman sum it up. Mr. Chairman, let me just say to my friend from Texas, pass this and put MTBs and TPA and you got my vote. It only takes two things. Two things that there's unbelievable support for. Now, what did I hear out of Mr. Doss? The Secretary of the Treasury recognizes that people around the world are manipulating currency because we're engaged in a conversation with them for them not to do it. My advice back is what you're doing is not working. Yeah. And at some point, you got to get out of the way and let us put the teeth into it so you get a parameter to actually accomplish what it is you acknowledge is a problem. And there's no better place. And Mr. Chairman, I understand how difficult this is. I understand what the House has said to you. I understand what the White House has said to you. More than difficult. But, you know, in this particular case, who can argue with us doing it right? I mean, this is a little odd. You got a former trade representative trying to stick a, a currency manipulation thing in a bill, and they, were, they, were, they grew up learning to hate this stuff. <laughs> because it, it doesn't get you closer to a deal. We're not here to make every deal get us closer. We're here to, here to get it right, right for America and right for our partners. Adopt this. Senator Portman, and then I'll make a few closing remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I kind of liked what Senator Burr said. Uh, I don't do this lightly. I would make two comments about some of the back and forth. First, there's probably no better vote counter uh, than the whip, uh, Mr. Cornyn, but I think if he's voting against this because he believes it jeopardizes the passage, then I think he has a blind spot on this issue. I can give you, and I will after this markup, I've already mentioned a couple of members who have told me just what Mr. Burgess told me, which is if you had currency in here, they could support TPA because they're looking for the ability to say to their constituents, to their workers, to their farmers, to their service providers, you know what? This not only opens up markets, but it does so in a way that helps to tilt that playing field back toward the middle a little bit. So there are members who are unable to support TPA because currency is not addressed. Yes. Now, I'm not suggesting that it isn't going to be a challenge for Chairman Hatch to move this through the whole process and get it done. <laughs> but if that's your standard, that it jeopardizes the passage, I would, with all due respect, say that this is going to help us get this done. And it helps trade. I'm a big supporter, as I said earlier, of giving the people I represent the opportunity to access the 95 percent of consumers who are outside of our borders. Why? Because it creates good jobs and benefits. It does grow the middle class. But we've got to be able to tell them that this is going to be fair. That's why this is the, this is the right combination. It's the right balance to Mr. Doss, because everybody else got to ask you questions, but I didn't. You said that it would derail the negotiations when you were pushed on it. I'm not sure you actually said that, but those words were put in your mouth. Have you ever negotiated with a trading partner before? Have you ever been in a trade negotiation and deal dealt with the negotiating objectives? I have participated in trade negotiations, yes. And so you're familiar with the fact that the negotiating objectives that are set out by this Congress for the USTR have considerable flexibility. Would you agree? I understand. I can give you examples of several trade <laughs> negotiating objectives that were never, yeah. never accomplished in the way that Congress had hoped because there is inherent flexibility in objectives. That's what it means. It's an objective. It's a principal objective. 
And beyond that, we also provide additional flexibility. We don't tell the negotiators exactly how to get there on purpose. We say follow the principles in the IMF that these countries have already agreed to abide by and they are violating to the detriment of the people we represent. And finally, we say for the remedy, you guys come up with a remedy. Senator Schumer has a specific remedy in his bill that a majority of this committee was willing to support. Talk about retaliation <coughs> threat. I mean, this is a specific one and I, and I support his, his legislation. But we don't even go that far, as Senator Stabenow has said. She'd like to go further. This is reasonable. It's balanced. It focuses on how to get more support for trade. So I would agree with the statements that Senator Burr said. This is not about derailing anything or making it harder to pass anything. It's about how to make it easier. It's about how to be able to say with a straight face to the people who were hired by, this is going to be good for you, for your families for your ability to get ahead in life. And um, Mr. Chairman, I would hope we could get a positive vote on a bipartisan basis on this amendment because I believe it'll help to accomplish what you and I share, which is that we ought to be moving forward with TPA to put America back in the business of expanding exports and helping the people we represent. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Senator Wyden. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Colleagues, I voted for the Schumer Amendment and I voted for the Bennett Amendment because in my view, neither of those amendments undermines America's ability to fight a financial crisis. I think this is an amendment that is a bridge too far. And in particular, what really swung me, and I urge colleagues, I mean, this is not the last time we're gonna be discussing this currency question, to reflect on what the chair of the Federal Reserve, Janet Yellen, has said, you know, Janet Yellen is a progressive Democrat. I say that to my colleagues, particularly on this side of, uh, of the aisle. She is concerned about what it will mean with respect to constraining monetary policy and the Fed's ability to uh, maintain those two uh, objectives, their historical objectives. So I urge my colleagues, particularly on this side of the aisle, to, uh, to vote no. The Schumer Amendment made sense. The Bennett Amendment made sense. I just think this is a bridge too far. Well, let me just say the distinguished vice chairman and I have spent days and nights trying to get both houses together on the most important legislation that this administration is going to have this year. So this is really important stuff. And I have no doubt we can handle this in another, uh, on something else, uh, and, and you can help me find it. If you're prepared to vote, I'm prepared to vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Grassley, aye. Mr. Crapo. Aye. Mr. Crapo, aye. Mr. Roberts. No. Mr. Roberts, no. Mr. Enzi. Aye. Mr. Enzi, aye. Mr. Cornyn. No. Mr. Cornyn, no. Mr. Thune. No. Mr. Thune, no. Mr. Burr. Aye. Mr. Burr, aye. Mr. Isaacson. No. Mr. Isaacson, no. Mr. Portman. Aye. Mr. Portman, aye. Mr. Toomey. No. Mr. Toomey, no. Mr. Coates. No. Mr. Coates, no. Mr. Heller, no. Mr. Heller, no. Mr. Scott, no. Mr. Scott, no. Mr. Wyden, no. Mr. Wyden, no. Mr. Schumer, aye. Mr. Schumer, aye. Ms. Stabenow, aye. Ms. Stabenow, aye. Ms. Cantwell, no. Ms. Cantwell, no. Mr. Nelson, no. Mr. Nelson, no. Mr. Menendez, aye. Mr. Menendez, aye. Mr. Carper, no. Mr. Carper, no. Mr. Cardin, aye. Mr. Cardin, aye. Mr. Brown, aye. Mr. Brown, aye. Mr. Bennett, no. Mr. Bennett, no. Mr. Casey. Mr. Casey, aye. Mr. Warner, no. Mr. Warner, no. Mr. Chairman, no. Chairman votes no. Clerk will report the vote. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, the final tally is 11 ayes, 15 nays. The amendment is defeated. We'll go on to the next amendment.